Beasts of England, Beasts of Ireland, Beasts of every land and clime, Hearken to my joyful tidings of the golden future time. The animals have all starved to death. Soon, the humans will come and reclaim the land. The distant cousin of Mr. Jones will live on it for a time. Then, it will be sold to build houses for families who work in the city. The rations were already reduced in December. Animal Farm is in the hands of the humans again. They take down the sign and rename it as Manor Farm. The animals who lived here before are butchered or sold. When they bring in new farm animals, they choose pigs who have never heard beasts of England. One day, the birds land in the farmyard in a wild excitement. No one is left to live on the farm. All of the animals have either starved or run away. The buildings are decaying, and the fields are unplowed. In time, the land will be divided up between the various neighbors. The burial plots in the orchard will grow over. The old animal farm sign will be burned. No one will remember the experiment, except a very few giggles. In their old age, they will hear the tune of beasts of England, and it will seem like a dream. The rations were already reduced in December. All of the animals fall in the end. Animal Farm has fallen in battle. There is no one left with the strength to defend it. The neighboring farmers move back in and take over. Mr. Pilkington claims the woods and the barley field. Mr. Frederick takes the rest of the fields and all the buildings. The animals are divided between them. The rats scatter to new houses where they are equally unwelcome. The hens go on laying in Mr. Frederick's hen houses. An old major's skull is sold to the Willingdon Curiosity Shop. Another winter damages the farm buildings. Many years go by. In time, both Napoleon and Snowball pass on. Younger pigs take on their work and continue the fight. They are never entirely at peace with Frederick or Pilkington, but they do not lose the farm either. The ways of Animal Farm become traditions. The pigs rely more and more on the birds who see everything. When the last pig is laid to rest, a robin stands on his grave. Years have now passed since the rebellion. The old leaders are all gone, though their monuments remain in the orchard. Even Squealer has aged, though he still offers his insights in old age.
pigs rely more and more on the birds, who see everything. When the last pig is laid to rest, a robin stands on his grave. afternoon, a number of dog carts drive up to the farm. A group of neighboring farmers have been invited to tour the place. They admire everything they see. The animals are weeding the turnip field. They work hard without ever looking up at either the pigs or the humans. That evening, there is loud laughter and singing from the farmhouse. A few of the animals creep up to look through the window. Around the long table sit half a dozen farmers with the most eminent pigs. They've just ended a game of cards. Beer has been brought out for the table. As the animals outside watch the scene, something strange happens. The pigs look more human than the humans do, and the old order of farmer and animal is reversed. One afternoon, a number of dog carts drive up to the farm. A group of neighboring farmers have been invited to tour the place. They admire everything they see. The animals are weeding the turnip field. They work hard without ever looking up at either the pigs or the humans. <laughs> That evening, there is loud laughter and singing from the farmhouse. A few of the animals creep up to look through the window. Around the long table sit half a dozen farmers with the most eminent pigs. They've just ended a game of cards. Beer has been brought out for the table. As the animals outside watch the scene, something strange happens. The faces of the pigs are changed. The creatures outside look from pig to human and from human to pig. And already it is impossible to say which is which. <laughs> 